Nice. Yes, we are live. I think. Hey guys, we are live, and let's get started. I. One, two, yeah. three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La la la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La la la. Hey guys. So, what's up guys? I am James Hake. This is the Hake Report. <laughs> and shout out to all of my supporters. Thank you to my major patrons, donors, supporters. Um, Asmador from West Texas. Caroline from New York. Matt from Indiana. Thank you for the awesome maple syrup. I heard that it takes... 40 gallons of maple sap to make one gallon of maple syrup. Dang. I don't know if that's f real news or fake news. I heard it from a Canadian. A Canadian Colombian who was born in Miami. What a shame. <laughs> that would be Nick. Or am I giving too much of his personal story away? Um, thank you guys for the support. And thank you to everybody on DLive and YouTube for the super chats. Hot Computer Smell. Noah's Arkansas. Jimmy DM, all you guys, thank you. It's cool. Um, by the way, you can support Jesse Lee Peterson. Did I mention it's Tuesday, Wednesday, the 25th of March, 2020? And I will get to calls. Appreciate you guys calling in and holding on already. 888-775-3773. There's a couple more lines open if you want to get in. But um, I will get to you. Hang tight, Chris and everybody. But support Jesse Lee Peterson, too. I mean, I know you're supporting him already, right? Most of you. Um, not just by Super Chats, but also on Patreon. Or if you don't like Patreon, I understand it because they're not pro-free speech. Subscribe Star is an alternative. Patreon.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Subscribestar.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Or, or, hold on. Let me just make sure I get these. Um, newproject2.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. That's a third alternative. That is a pro-free speech platform, outright pro-free speech. It was created by that, this guy named um, Dick Masterson. He's been on, he's kind of co-hosted or been a fellow guest on the, with Jesse Lee Peterson on the Ralph Retort on the Kill Stream a year ago or so, maybe two years. Um... He created a Patreon alternative called New Project 2, number 2. New Project, all one word, number 2. You don't type out number, you just put, put the 2. <laughs> Dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. I actually support on all those platforms, just so I can see what's going on, you know. And we are posting, I say we, I see like the Jesse Lee Peterson team is posting... Um, 90s shows, 90s TV shows, you know, the Jesse Lee Peterson show we've put out, we've put out at least one on those, on those platforms, exclusive to that platform, at least temporarily anyways, so if you want to catch it, support there. Um, also, hilarious calls, like Mel from Atlanta, <laughs> uh, some of you may not remember Mel from Atlanta, he referred in one of these videos, which I don't think it's out yet, but it will be out soon. He refers to Ginny Thomas, who's the wife of Clarence Thomas, as um, that Uncle Tom, Supreme Coat Justice, white wife. <laughs> he hates Jesse, he hates Clarence Thomas, and he hates Ginny Thomas. All the decent people, this guy, black... 70-something-year-old, probably 80. I don't know if, even know if this guy is still alive anymore. But he was calling when I was producer. He was calling when the Kelly was producer, the current Fallen State producer, and others. Giovanni A. says, here. Thank you, Giovanni A. That's cool. Um, oh, quick. Before I get to calls, because I know that once I get to calls, so hang tight, guys. 
um, I may not get to my other content. And I did show you some kind of uh, parental warning type images. Joel did, but I gave them to him, so I take responsibility. Um, I have another tribute. Another legend has died, I learned, from a fellow JLP fan, a fellow churchgoer, Church with Jesse Lee Peterson, and a listener to my show. Shout out to Chris for the, um, for the heads up about this. Miss Chris, actually. Uh, so I'm going to get to this person. On the level, maybe even above the level, of Kenny Rogers. Remember Kenny Rogers? He died. He's the one that uh, sang The Gambler. I sang it for you yesterday. Check it out. Um, parts of it. Hopefully I got the lyrics right. <laughs> but this man named Genesis Peoridge. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. He died. And so I do hope to get to that. But I have a minor correction. I think it's a minor. This is not Genesis Peoridge. That was his wife. But that's okay. <laughs> and he's trying to be twins with his wife. Or was. Now he's, he's passed on. At age 70. All these guys. Jesse is, is 70. Full of life. Genesis Peoridge was 70. Full of death. And you know who else was about 70? Was, uh, who's that Colombian drug lord? Very famous. He was like the richest man in the world. <laughs> Billionaire. <laughs> 30 billion dollars. Pablo Escobar was about 70. And he's long gone. Full of death. And he was fat too. <laughs> I heard. Um so three three worlds, huh? And they're all boomers. But well, they're not anymore. They're dead, but Jesse's not dying. So that's cool. Isn't that interesting? Like the divergent ways that your life can go. Um, I am wearing my cool t-shirt. It says, it has a picture of me. And shout out to Mark for the design inspiration and to Lock Your Door for the execution of this design. Lock Your Door, excellent designs. Check them out. Um, you can find them on Twitter, Lock Your Door. Um, that's not his handle. His handle is like Sugar Pill Killer or something like that. Search for it. I'm following him. I'll, uh, I'll, <clears throat> I'll link it. Just remind me. But um, you can find this, teespring.com slash stores slash The Hake Report. Um, yeah, it's cool. Or thehakereport.com and then click on the Teespring. But minor correction, I didn't find any footage. I was talking yesterday about these people licking the toilet seats. You can show a few of those pictures of these people licking the toilet seats and donning armor. Uh, from California called in listener, faithful listener, supporter, supportive anyway. Um, he mentioned that they're kind of pointing out that it's white kids. Oh, licking toilet seats. I think I dragged it in. No? Hmm. I put it in more recently. Yeah, yeah. So, um... I didn't find any foot. He, he mentioned that there was a story of black kids coughing on produce inside of grocery stores. Oh, look. Okay, inside of grocery stores. And I don't know if there is any footage of that because I couldn't find any. And they said that it was fake news or whatever. Or that it was false. A false rumor that it was a disturbing trend. Maybe there was one incident or they were just coughing in the stores, coughing into their arms as a prank. But look at these disgusting people. Well, this one is different. This one is from a couple years ago. I'm showing pictures of these alleged liberals um, licking toilet seats and urinals that are tagged with marker that says F, F word Trump. <laughs> and that's their protest. But that might be a hoax, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean... They are really licking the urinals and toilet seats, but anyways. Yeah, um, girls thinking that they're cute, licking, and they call it the coronavirus challenge, licking airplane toilet seats and others. Um, I have a clip of it, a dis disgusting clip. I'm not sure I don't want to play it. But I did see a POC guy licking a toilet seat in a picture. So it's not just whites being dumb. Maybe this guy is just throwing up. <laughs> anyway. 
Uh, so I just, uh, just to correct the record, I don't know if, if black kids actually coughed on the produce at the um, grocery stores. Wouldn't really put it past them. They've done some horrible things. They've licked, dude, they licked um, um, ice cream just a few months ago, several months ago maybe. They would open up the, the ice cream container and lick it and then put it back. So, or one guy did anyways, or gal, or mul maybe multiple. So, in short, this specific incident may not have been true, but, um, but they do, they have done some nasty evil stuff, poorly raised. So, anyways, let me get to Chris out of Los Angeles, California. Chris, it's good to hear from you. What's up? Hey, James, how you doing, man? Uh, doing fine. Just wanted to just wanted to talk about this whole craziness that's going on with the coronavirus. I know it's probably you know beating a dead horse, but what I wanted to say was that this is all a ploy to you know uh, just you know to explain away the impending collapse of the economy, and you know now they have a perfect excuse to pass this two trillion dollar legislation. Yeah, uh, and it was just a giant scam, man. And they scared they scared the crap out of everyone. Have them distracted. It's just like a it's like a repeat of you know previous uh, scams they pull on the American people to rob the blind. And I just hope that you know your listeners are seeing that. And what? I'm not saying the virus isn't real, but I, you know what it, can it, like somebody once said, they you know never let a perfect uh, or never let a good. Uh, catastrophe go to waste or something along those lines. Yeah, anyway, Ob go ahead. It, Obama's Obama's former guy Rahm Emanuel. I don't I forget what he was, but Rahm Emanuel, who was the mayor of Chicago for a while before this black lesbian took over, he said, "Never go to no, never let a crisis go to waste." Right, and that's what the right, liberals right. the liberals are doing that for sure. I I'm sure the rhinos are are involved in that. You think Trump is? Is involved in that, you th or I don't know. I kind of trust it, it, Trump. It doesn't seem that way to me. It does, uh, or it does. It it doesn't. It okay. doesn't seem like. I think Trump. You know, their only goal is to make him look as horrible as possible. Yeah. And 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 you know, Trump's not the most eloquent, uh, articulate <laughs> guy, but I, you know, he's uh, he's firm on what he stands for, and 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 he, you know, he he can call out the BS. Right. You can sniff it out. You can dish it out, but you can sniff it out. And uh, I, I just I think that the media's constant pounding and pounding and pounding on this corona. Yeah. It's just a clear red flag that they want you focused on that. That's so true. That, you know, and then they they are, they they have they've mastered the art of taking clips and uh, framing the stupid or like what they said was false or what have you. You know they. You know, taking things out of context, uh, and and like I said, I, I I see that in the media. So yeah, it doesn't appear that he's involved, but uh, you know, even like they say, sometimes the, the person right next to you could be that snake in your ear, you know, telling you lies or misleading you. So what do you recommend? Yeah, gotta, what's your recommendation for people? Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted everybody to be aware if they have, if they're not already, and. Uh, the next thing is, you know, uh, you know, when they tell you to, to panic and, and, you know, go crazy over this thing, you know, that's the time that you got to stay calm and think things through, you know, and, and trust in God that it's in His control. You know, we can we can be ready for a disaster because they can come at any time. But yeah, you know, after that, you know, you just gotta you gotta come to your senses and. and and not trust, you know, the lies. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be, oh, you gotta be awake. You have to be alert and pay attention to what's going on because they're they're out there to lead you astray. Yeah, I I agree with that because people are these people are deceptive, and then when they get all feel good, like oh, everybody's uniting. Uh, I don't I don't buy that. I like when Trump calls them to unite and do what's right, but I don't trust them at all. <laughs> Including a lot of oh, the Republicans, yeah, yeah. including maybe most yeah, of the republic, most of the Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, 
there's enemies everywhere. Behind yeah. those enemies, they're, you, know, you know, like they have a mask over their face and you, they, you know, they, they smile. They smell like the song says, they smile in your face and they stab you in the back. Yep. And uh, so it's just, you can really, it's really hard to trust anyone these days. It is. You, know, you just have to trust in God. True. And, and it's only going to get worse. You know, they're only going to make more, you know, evil attempts. I mean, these are just downright evil. You know, they don't care who they sacrifice to get what they want. Yeah. And whether it's, you know, thousands of people or whatever. Uh, so, yeah. And, and governments are capable of anything. You know, the deep state, as they call it. They're, yeah. You go back You go back in history, uh, millennia, and uh, kings would do whatever, the, you know, it took for power. It was just all based on greed and corruption and evil. True. And uh, and you uh, have these, would, you know, and you have these private companies in bed with the government, and sometimes, in some cases, they're more powerful than the government too, like the uh, oh, yeah, Facebook, yeah, you, Google, Amazon, scum of the earth people oh, yeah, running you, that those companies. These are the, these are the modern day nobles. These are the modern day, you know, the king's men that you know they would, you know, they they get their little cut kickbacks to to serve their their evil kings or their corrupt kings, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's just evil, downright evil. And, and, and the deception is going to get crazier. And with, you know, the rolling out of this 5G, you know, where it's just going to be constant surveillance, and tracking of people and, uh, you know, re- no regard for people's health. You know, they, they talk about this 5G stuff. There's all this bill slipping and all this other stuff. They're talking about relief. You know, there's like, it's pennies on the dollar <laughs> out of that trillion, two trillion dollars. Yeah. You know, who knows what that money is going towards? That's true. Uh, that, yeah. And, I agree with so that. It, you don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's just an evil world out there, and, and they're poisoning the mind. You know, whether they're making a man girly and uh, and and mindless, weak, and sucked into their telephones or whatever, and, and just totally brain dead, man. And it's just sad. It's really sad. Well, thanks for the heads up, Chris. Appreciate that. All right, man. Have a good one. Good to hear from you. Take care. Talk to you soon. Good, good to hear from you. Bye. All right. I just got a tip from Dark Side of the Bear. What? She sent me a Red Elephants article. The Red Elephants. TheRedElephants.com. That is a... Reli- it's a pretty reliable outlet. That's Vincent James. He's a... I consider him a... A fairly honest journalist slash activist. Not fairly. I consider him a fair and honest journalist slash activist. Here's the headline. Chinese intentionally spread coronavirus. Spit on food, elevators, and park benches. Benches. This is by Sasha O'Connor. Um, from March 24th, to today, just yesterday. Dozens of videos have emerged of Chinese citizens intentionally spreading the coronavirus by spitting on food inside of elevators and wiping saliva on park benches. Gross. This is not blacks. This is Chinese. Some of the videos shown display Chinese citizens spitting directly on strangers. Wow. The video sh- One video shows a Chinese woman who was confirmed to have been infected with the coronavirus spitting on produce in an Australian supermarket. What the heck? And it was a tweet from Beach Milk, Beach Milk, spelled like it sounds. This quote-unquote lady is caught on CCTV purposely sneezing on fresh produce in a Sydney, Australia, supermarket. No indication as yet whether she has been identified. This is, it's not the only Chinese CCP that needs to be held to account. Interesting. China lied, people died. They caught her. What an evil woman. Yeah, um, in Canada, supposedly, a woman blows her nose and rubs it all over the back of a bench. This is what multiculturalism looks like, according to a Twitter user, Pagliacci Dorati. So, uh, according to this guy, according to Red Elephants, it is happening. In this case, this is not the blacks doing it. This is the Chinese. In... Australia and Canada, maybe more places. So you can't trust people. I remember I went to, um, is it Monterey Park or Montebello or somewhere? I used to go with my Chinese friend from Hong Kong. And 
he would pick me up and we would go and get like boba, right? Boba is that tapioca uh, balls, drinks, and smoothies. And we would go, we would park in this structure and then walk down into down the stairwell to the stores, a little shopping outlet. And um, I would put my hand on the rail and he'd be like, no, don't put your hand on the rail. People spit. Oh, James, you got to learn. <laughs> And so people are evil, and it's not just with this coronavirus thing. People are just disgusting people. So <laughs> ever since then, I've been like, I've been aware when I'm putting when I'm putting my hand on the, um, you know, the rail that that you the handrail that you hold when you're going downstairs, especially in a parking structure, just to steady yourself, be careful. <laughs> it might have been Alhambra. Yeah, it was off of New. I'm not sure. It might have, Alhambra, Monterey Park, Mon I don't know. <laughs> so, anyways, and especially kids, they're not, cons they're not, and young people and poorly raised people, uh, they're not considering the consequences. And then some of them are just malicious, like this. Anyways. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let me get to Richie out of Boston, Massachusetts, and then Robert, and then I'll get to some more stuff. Um, Richie, thanks for calling. What's up? How you feeling, James? I'm feeling fine. You know, last night I felt a little weird, but this morning I'm feeling fine. So that's good. Well, that, that, that's probably just like a little uh, rubber band thing going on. You're going to you're gonna feel better. Or your mind's going to tell you that. Then you're going to feel a little like crap. So, yeah. But I think you're, I think, I think you're on the mend. Yeah, I think so too. You sound well, but um, I would advise people that when they're going through a door, to just gently put your the bottom of your foot on the door and then just nudge it open. This way, yeah, you're not touching stuff. I mean, they taught us that stuff in the academy, but yeah, it kind of goes well with this corona madness that's going on, especially kids spitting on things, and yep. it's just insane. It's insane. Yeah, and but, in some um, cases, these are adults spitting on things. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I guess the craziness brings out the crazy. Yep. But um, uh, I, I, fo I found it pretty—I I, I was curious. Like, Trump's approval rating is, is up to 56 percent, according wow. to some polls. Yeah. And um, I always say just add five points to it if you're going to throw Trump's name on it. So it's really around 60 or 61 I'm out delivering food for people, and a lot of people uh, now are commenting on the job that Trump's doing because, you know, I got the, the USA 45 hat in my car and stuff. I don't care. People know where I come from. Right. I don't, you know, I, I people, but um, I think for the first time ever since people are home, um, they're actually listening to the president. And he's on, usually goes on, Eastern time, right around the time when the news comes on. Yeah. So people are getting firsthand, like, firsthand interaction with the president, I think, for the first time. And um, then they're switching over to That's CNN, true. and it's like, it's like there's two coronaviruses. <laughs> you know, and the president's trying to give hope. And given the facts and stuff like that, which is why he snapped on that reporter, and CNN is just, it seems like they're reaching for straws now. They, it, it's its so bizarre how the two are different. And I think that that's a correlation as to why his approval numbers are up. A lot of people are hearing from the man for the first time and seeing him in action. And, you know, I think people can, uh, you know, I think that's why the, the the poll numbers are going through the roof. And I also think that's why Pelosi, she knows she's done. She knows she's done. She knows that people now are seeing even more what the president is doing, and which is why, like, how can someone in their heart deny a bill? Like, if there was ever a time for something to go to the president very quickly, it's this. And yeah. she still delayed it. So. You know, enough of my little rant, James. I know there's other callers, and uh, I'm glad you're feeling well. I'll let you go. I appreciate it, Richie. It's good to hear from you, man. Thank you. Good to hear from you, too, James. Later. All right. Take care. Good guy. Formerly known as Beta Boot Camp, I think, right? 
So let me get to, oh, I didn't get to Robert yesterday. Robert out of Kansas, thanks for calling back today. Hey, good morning, James. I had heard you wondering out loud uh, about my theory uh, regarding uh, white men or white people being the image of God. Yes, but let me just cut in first and and tell you something on uh, behalf of, are you on Twitter? Uh, no, I've been I've been removed from the internet pretty much. Oh, I didn't know that, man. There's this guy named. Yeah, they Great, don't like me. There's a follower of mine named Great West Dev, who asked if Robert from Kansas, do you have a Twitter? At Great West Dev. No, no Twitter. They removed me. I, I my, I'm whatever. I, I guess I, my thoughts are not uh, legal on Twitter. Yeah, you know what you might do just to be on there. Um, just start a new account and just don't, just don't tweet that way. <laughs> they don't know, you know, since you yeah. don't have the freedom of speech anymore, just don't tweet. And that way, uh, you can be on there. You can get like DM, you know, private messages, DMs, direct messages and stuff mm -hmm. and follow people if you want, especially since this mm -hmm. guy seems to want to get in touch with you. Just a side <laughs> note. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's that's cool. That's good to know. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, he's well uh, means well by that. Yeah, I um, think he does. I think he uh, generally agrees with you. He has. I saw on his Twitter profile, um, on the website that he links, he links to uh, mass shootings, and the mass shootings, the majority of mass shootings he shows, are not the whites that get, you know, <laughs> stereotyped so badly about over mass shootings. It is actually indeed POCs committing mass most mass shootings. So, yeah, let's talk about why that is. Uh, you know, hey, they teach us in school that we come from Africa. I think that's why Jesse still says that. He says, "Mommy Africa," because he still, in some way, believes the lies from the children of the lie that we derive from monkeys. No, he doesn't. He doesn't okay. think that. No, he's totally well, messing around do, right? with the "Mommy Africa" thing. But most people believe that we we we, we evolved from monkeys, and it, it's it's a way of denying God. Where if you believe in God truly, you know that God made us in in the way that we are now, and that there isn't anything that is evolutionary about anything. Okay, if 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 evolution was true, we would have hybrids right now that we could see. We would have lizard rats or whatever, right? You would have hybrids you could point to, but there that doesn't exist. So. Um, my point about all this is to say that instead of coming from Africa, we actually migrated down into Africa. And when we migrated down into Africa, uh, there was enough genetic uh, uh, similarity with chimpanzees and other, other primates that we mixed with those. So basically what I'm saying is white people, like in quotations, uh, migrated down into Africa and they mixed with monkeys. And then that's where you get black people from. And you'll notice that black people look like monkeys. Uh, they're, they have a low <laughs> IQ, and they're violent like monkeys. They, um, they, they have their, all these similarities to monkeys. And what the controllers did is they took that reality, that truth, and they flipped it over and said, no, 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 we come from monkeys. There is no God. And uh, that's why we have these different races and black let people me, are like this. Let me ask you a question. Monkeys have straight hair. And blacks don't have straight hair. Uh, well, I, okay, but you now. can see that you can <laughs> see that uh, blacks have black skin like a monkey. They have facial features of a monkey. They um they they exhibit behavior like uh, being violent, uh, being uh, <laughs> being stupid, you know, like an animal. So it's it's uh it, it really is that that actually is the truth and for most people that's so uh, they consider that like hate or or whatever you know but it, it really is what happened we interbred with monkeys but where do you and, where, but how do you know this it seems like for one it seems kind of irrelevant because what happened in the past we don't we actually don't know like human beings do not know what happened this guy that from you sound kind of like the opposite end of extreme of this guy, Kevin, from whatever it was, Indiana, who's called my show before he called Jesse's show. And Kevin believes in stuff, so-called science, that we didn't have marriage back in the day. And he's thinking that that's science, but science is about observation. And you can only observe in the present. You can't observe what happened in the past. You can maybe take some clues here and there. But it sounds like what you guys are doing is taking some 
clues about what you see in the world around you and jumping to conclusions about what reality was back then and what reality really is. So are you getting okay, are you well, trying to explain your why whites are the image of God? Yeah, absolutely. That's why you see the war on whites by the satanic government is is because we do represent the image of God and a lot of people think that's a physical thing. It actually isn't. It's about the psyche, the mind, the soul. Uh, the spirit, and that's really what it is. And then and when we mix with animals, uh, that was corrupted, right? So uh, whenever they talk about Israel and the left. Jews, what they're actually talking about is the pure, pure human, uh, 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 pure humans that are in the image of God. But and that if you is, think about what, what but hold on, but most, hold on, what you're God. describing, but hold on, what you're describing is the physical. Well, the physical is because a when you're talking about pure, internal. when you're talking about pure humans. Yeah. So, I, so are you suggesting that that um, blacks and others don't have a spirit just because they're not because in your mind well, they, they're not they're, pure humans? They're mixed with monkeys. Oh, do they have a spirit? So, That's my question. Well, obviously they have a spirit, and we're okay. all one race and all that stuff. I mean, one that's race. all the that's all true. Like we actually are all linked uh, genetically as human beings. I'm not saying that isn't true. That when they say one race, that actually is true. But some of us mix with monkeys, but and it's see, very obvious. See, th- and so that's my, all I'm saying. My speculation was correct. Like I could only assume that you believe that whites are the image of God is because the children of the lie are attacking whites the most out of any other race. Well, as we know, the children of the lie lie to us, right? So when you hear a theory of evolution in school, you can bet that that's a lie because right. that's what they do. They have to give us a deception to believe, and then they're able to control us because if we knew the truth, we would actually serve the truth, which is God, and we wouldn't serve them. I have so somebody by, de- by deception, they control us. I have somebody who wants to talk with you. Do you want to talk okay. to anybody? Okay. My favorite caller, Mays, out of Dayton, Ohio, wants to ask Robert from Kansas a question. Mays, go for it. Yes. So if, 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 if you say that they mix together in Africa and made uh, people of color monkeys, so what about the gorilla and all those things? And what about people that sleep with the animals? What made them do that? So I don't see people sleeping with monkeys now, and they're not producing anything. I heard that somebody so did that with a monkey, and that's how AIDS happened, but I don't know. Well, they used to say we had tails. I mean, you go to other countries, and they say we have tails. Like, tails? What do you mean? That was a lie that was spread by people like you. So I'm uh, saying people like you. Are you Maze. talking about violence? Maze, it's always, I know you, it's always whites no, no, no. versus blacks with Maze. No, 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 no. I'm asking. He said it's not what? <laughs> Oh, I said it's always whites versus blacks with maize, but no, that's no, no, a side no. comment. This is, this is somebody that's, 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 that's messed up in the head. But that's why I was saying, so you said violence. We don't want to discuss violence. So, so blacks are not more time, violent than any other race you, on the planet? I mean, mean that, that's statistically based on the planet, that If you want to see who's the violent people who always want to create wars, <laughs> what man do you see that sit down and, and made a strategy to go harm other people in other countries to fight and keep now you tell me. Well, and it wasn't white like it wasn't have a, the highest you, capacity for anything, good or bad. No, they don't so have the highest capacity of, for anything. Not violence. You want to make it that way, but it's not. So you take well, a whole group of people, you take a whole group of people with your stupidity, and and create violence. And that that didn't make any sense. You're talking about uh, monkeys and humans, and that's what created us. Please. Hey, um, la- thank you, Maze. Appreciate that. But that doesn't make any sense. So when you make some sense, uh, get yourself together, and then you come back and try to speak. Evolution that, doesn't that make sense, that's, that, that's true, that's too. That's what doesn't make sense. Uh, come on, no, no Robert. what you're saying doesn't make any sense. Robert. Because do you say the monkeys, monkeys and humans are getting together now, making babies? The people on D Live think that you're a fed. Robert? Uh, I, yeah, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, a fed or a troll. <laughs> But a fed. Uh, probably is. No, I'm a I'm a I'm a human man. Um, no, you're not a human man because uh, you probably met with animal yourself. You know the man that had the pig in Walmart messing with him. Gross. The guinea pig, and they took it away from him. <laughs> the gerbil. Uh, oh no, Sorry. no! Did he make any kids from the guinea pig? No. Uh uh-uh, uh. Oh, that's thank very you. So true. That's why, you, that's why I know you don't have it all. You just spread. You guys are a mixture of. Know. Of facts and lies. <laughs> yes. Um, well, just friend, lies guys, look into it. Do your own research. And I hope nobody's breathing. Hold on, Maze. I'm no going to put you breathing. on hold. Uh, are you okay, done, Maze? I hope no one's breathing that air he's pulling out. Maze, are you done? Throat. Yes, I am. All right. That's thank all you. I had to say. All right. Take care. Good to hear from you. 
Um, Robert, I, it's for the record, these pe some of these people think that you're a Fed. I don't think so. I don't think of you as no, a No, I'm a, I'm a private citizen. I don't work for any government entity at all, uh, let alone uh, the FBI. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous, guys. Right. I mean, I, I'm just a normal guy in, in, in here in America. I'm, I don't work for anybody. Um, when did you serve? You served in the military. Do you mind my asking? Yeah, I served uh, in the U.S. Army. Uh, got to go to Iraq a few times, spent, spent years overseas, and uh, I've actually got to see Africa. You know, a lot of people haven't seen that continent. So, um, yeah, I've been, I've been all over the world, and um, I got to experience a lot in that way. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's why I know the Earth is flat, too, right? So, you know, whenever you, when you circumnavigate the globe, you, or what's supposed to be the globe, you start looking at your routes and how weird they are. It's like, why are we going way over here? When you put them on a flat earth map, right, everything is direct line, right, right. when you're flying or whatever. So there's all sorts of things that we're deceived by, Hey, That's the, how that's how these people rule over us. The, right. Satan rules by deception. He doesn't rule by telling you the truth. I know, the Robert, but, it's, but he's yeah. ruling. Anyways, I got to go, Robert. It's good to hear from you, man. All right. Thanks, Hake. Bye. Take care. I don't think that he's a Fed, guys. I think that he, um, there's a lot of people that are uh, <laughs> thank him for his service. <laughs> um, there are people that are just that into their mess, if you will. I think there are people like that. So um, you would be. I mean, just look at the crazy things that all sorts of different people believe. So. Um, where was I? You know, somebody asked if I covered Andrew Gillum. Yes, I did cover him in brief, um, especially when somebody called in about him. I, I covered that story with Andrew Gillum, the former wannabe governor of Florida, Democrat. He was supposed to be like the next Obama. And now he's in um, he's in some legal trouble that who knows what's going to happen. But uh, fortunately, the Republican guy won. And he's an OK guy, this guy who won in Florida. He's the one who said, <laughs> now you can call him O-Trauma. Um, he's the one who said, listen, we need to not monkey this up. And then everybody... Got went crazy. What was that guy's name? The governor of Florida, the new governor. Um, I don't know, but DeSantis, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> yeah, he said, Let's not monkey this up. But and I don't know what he was talking about. Maybe he was talking about we have a good thing going or something. Anyways, um, I have a couple of people, evil people on Twitter, imitating good. Um, and it's regarding, in particular, this coronavirus thing that everybody's scared about. Bernie Sanders is an evil guy. And I have a tweet from Bernie Sanders just to give you another example of why he's evil. It's not just because he wants to um, steal your money and redistribute like he's, uh, like he's Robin Hood. Playing like he's the hero when he's a zero. He tweeted... Oh, pull this up for me, Joel. It's in the main folder. Um, about abortion. He said, quote, he tweeted, quote, this was yesterday, I think. It is outrageous that right-wing politicians in states like Texas and Ohio are using this crisis to risk women's health and safety by denying their right to abortion and other reproductive health care. Ridiculous. That's not reproductive health care. That's reproductive um, murder. <laughs> Instead, we should be expanding access with things like telemedicine. You're going to kill a baby through telemedicine? Through telephone? Huh? So I said Bernie is evil. And that got 1,585 retweets and 8,200 likes. Whole thousands of idiots and evil people on Twitter. But we knew that, right? But um, that's Bernie Sanders. Abortion means killing babies. And other reproductive health care, they don't, they don't care about actual reproduction. Yeah, I said Bernie is evil. <laughs>
I have two Twitter accounts, just so you guys know. At James Anton Hake, and then at The Hake Report. You know, I made one for my show. So, Kenny Rogers, the country singer, sang The Gambler. Great song. 1978, I think. Is not the only one who died recently. Kenny Rogers died late last week. Well, the week before, March 14th, this man died, Genesis Peoridge. And I forget what his real name was. Genesis Peoridge. He was, his real name was Neil Andrew Megson, born in Manchester, England. Died at age 70 in New York City. Why did we have to have him? <laughs> And he was like the godfather of industrial music, right? Industrial music meaning they make noise that some angry people enjoy. Angry, uh, especially younger people, enjoyed back in the 80s, 70s. Maybe he might have even been active in the 60s. And look at this. Like he showed the first one. I came across this because I was, I got this tip from Miss Chris, right? Genesis Peoridge died because she knew that I knew about <laughs> Psychic TV. Psychic TV was one of his bands throbbing. I don't know if I want to say the other name of the in, original band. But anyways, look at the title of this YouTube video that I came across from a Andre Bauer. Interview, life advice from Genesis Peoridge. And he changed his name to this Genesis Peoridge. And it's like Porridge. It's supposed to be like porridge, which is uh, something that you eat, especially when you're poor. <laughs> That's why it's called porridge. But he's this guy. Let me tell you, I responded, why would I give take life advice from Genesis Peoridge? I like his music. He turned more female. So let me just explain. This man, and you might not want your kids to see this. Some a couple of these pictures. They're slightly, like, showing a, a bit much, but not too much, but it's, like, showing a bit much more than you want to really look at, even as an adult. But uh, this man, his second or third wife, right, was this woman named, nicknamed Lady J. He met her at a BDSM, which means, like, torture sex stuff, a uh, little thing, place, somewhere. But anyways, she was like 20 years younger than him. He was 45. She was in his 20s. She was in her 20s or whatever. And he, anyways, he fell in so-called love with her. And they so-called loved each other so much that they wanted to become like each other and dress more and more alike. But you notice he's dressing more like her and more like a slut. <laughs> Dyeing his hair like her. What? Getting, uh, getting breasts like her. He actually got surgery to get breasts like her. And, um, so I just noticed that it reminded me of what J.C. Lee Peterson says, where the man goes into the woman's world and it's pure hell. And that's what he did. He took that to the extreme. He turned into like a woman-looking thing. Rather than her becoming more logical, manly, not into appearances. <laughs> so I just noticed that. And you look at his younger pictures. I, saw, I actually saw him in concert when I was right out of college. I wasn't liberal, I swear, but... Uh, <laughs> I was into like weird music and a friend of mine is like, hey, you should check out Psychic TV. And so I, we went to this concert and they sang this song, Roman P. And it's a catchy song. Are you free? Are you free? Are you really, 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 really free? Is it you? Is it me? Or is it really destiny? Something like that. But he was like, he seemed like he was, this is him as a younger man. I'm showing pictures of him. He had like short hair. But even back then, he was still kind of effeminate. And he had like a false 
idea about love and Christianity. He, he kind of criticized Christianity a lot, modern Christianity a lot. But he could see that he still he had that like woman inside of him, even with a shaved head. He looks like that. He looks like one of these like there's a movie star who looks a lot like this, I want to say, or a singer or something, a female who looks like him. But it's crazy. Well, he's dead now. But people admire, and he was a he was a thinker, an intellectual. He thought a lot, and he came up with, I guess you could call them interesting ideas. But it was, it was kind of like what the Bible talks about, where everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That's what this man was. But he was interesting. I don't know. I liked his. I liked his music. Catchy songs. Some of them were not catchy. They were just noise. Interesting noise. But, um, yeah. What a mess. Dead at 70. Of some crazy cancer or something. And that Roman P song, by the way, was about Roman Polanski. Who was... Is. He's still alive. He's in his 80s. I think. Um, Roman P... Roman Polanski, about this man who was, I think he was, right, a Hollywood producer. I don't think that I've ever seen any of his movies, but so-called award-winning, all these Hollywood people came to his defense when he was accused of having sex with a minor. He was accused of it. Don't know if it's true, but the story goes that this man, Roman Polanski, was at Jack Nicholson's, you know, the actor? Famous actor, very good actor, but I don't know much about him. Um, you know, about him, his personal life. Nor am I that interested, really, but he had this 13-year-old girl modeling at um, the home of Jack Nicholson. He was arrested and charged in Los Angeles, this Roman Polanski guy. And then... Um, he was going to agree to a plea deal where he was charged with six counts, but he was only going to get plead, plead guilty to one and then get time served or something, right? And then the judge reportedly, supposedly, like, changed his mind and wanted to put him away for 50 years in prison. And so he fled the country and went to Switzerland, France, somewhere. A couple of different places, right? And... Um, Hollywood people were still defending him. And then 10, year, 10, 12 years later, this 13-year-old girl, now a 20-something-year-old young woman, sues him. And, you know, the media gets all involved and all this mess. By the way, about Roman P., his, his second wife, whom he married, was, what's her name, Tate? Something Tate? And she was murdered by the Charles Manson uh, so-called family, the Charles Manson cult, you know, the mass murderer here in uh, Los Angeles area. He committed, Charles Manson, their people committed murders right outside my high school on King's Row, which is a, a little uh, alleyway. Killed somebody right uh, near my old high school, but that was in the 60s when my uncle was in, in, uh, at that school. Crazy, huh? But, yeah, they went to this guy's mansion or whatever, right, up in, you know, up in the rich area in Los Angeles area and killed this woman, Tate, his wife, who was 26 years old, pregnant. So I guess the child died, too. And she was out with friends. I think they killed the friends as well. And it was a mess. And so... After that, I think, was when, in 77 or something, he was accused. That happened in the 60s. His wife was killed. In the 70s, he allegedly had this mess with the uh, 13-year-old girl. So, he did a song about her. But then he had, I don't know, all kinds of mess. Very interesting, though. Sharon Tate. Thank you, Blessed and Pray. But a lot of... That's, you talk, Jesse Lee Peterson talks about how the world is the Old Testament. Some of the things that you read about in the Old Testament 
Oh my gosh. One of my liberal professors told me this story about Judges 19, I think it was. And Judges 19 was, uh, you want to read a horror, not really a horror story, but a horrific story. Um, you can read Judges 19. That, yeah, there's just it's a mess in the Old Testament. And it's not too different from the stuff that you're seeing in the world today and in the world in the 60s, 70s, and maybe even prior. It must have, must have been something wrong prior for the boomers to get this messed up. Something must have been wrong with the older generation, right? So, anyways, I want to tell you guys about, and then I will, I am going to open the treasure chest, guys. I'm going to open the treasure chest um, on dlive.tv slash the Hague Report. Let me just uh, uh, check it out. Hold on. <laughs> By the way, let me read a few super chats, and then I will get to this. Um, I mentioned, yes, somebody asked me who else I, I watched besides Jesse Lee Peterson, the Fallen State Church of Jesse Lee Peterson. One of them is Frank Hassel. And... I was like all pumped up about Frank Hassel. He goes around hassling people. Well, he came out yesterday on his channel with a, a short movie, you could call it, called The Boxed Life. Oh my gosh. Tribute. I shared it on my channel, on my community page, on my channel. And I also, I also tweeted it out. It's, it's, a, it's a tribute to this transgender dude who thinks he's a woman, young guy, and his allegedly drunk father, and this, whom he lives, with whom this transgender lives. And that is hell. <laughs> I'm hoping that the Jesse Lee Peterson show covers this story as well. I hope. Because it is this young man her is her is going through horrific hell and he is such a liar such an evil liar this is the spiritually dead show the show the screenshot of um if you if you refreshed you probably see it uh, i think the box life frank hassel just to show the people the um thumbnail and the title just out yesterday and it was edited by somebody else, archived and edited by... The footage was archived and edited from some a Twitch streamer, right? Twitch is a far... I am streaming on Twitch, by the way. Hey, guys. <laughs> and I probably have as many viewers as the guy who is documented here <laughs> on Twitch. But, um, man, this Twitch streamer is... He streamed out himself interacting... I kind of don't want to spoil it, really. Interacting with his father. He's all skinny as skinny can be. And when he's not dressed up like a woman, he's like a handsome guy, although he is very skinny. But then he thinks and acts just like his mama. <laughs> Which we don't see his mother. I hate to spoil it, right? But, oh my gosh. Am I, am I making this interesting? I'm asking the question. Am I making this interesting for you guys? What can I give away that's not giving away too much? Because I hate to spoil it. Because I went into this not knowing anything about it. I just watched uh, Frank Hassel. I'm watching it. <laughs> oh. But I don't want to overhype it either. Just check it out. It's a, in, fact, if, um, in fact, it's kind of a letdown, but it shows reality. Okay? It's crazy anyway let me read super chats and then i will get to calls all right okay uh army ann says hi hake taking a break from fake news appreciate that army ann right on on d live dark side of the bear what with a diamond courtesy of beerly news me shaggy and brandon m nice I don't know if you pronounce, if you spelled that right. Barely news. Barely news. Oh, barely news. Me, Shaggy Boy, and Brandon M. Cool. Barely, as in B E A R 
L Y News. Cool. Hot computer smell. Are there any classic maze calls in the 90s shows? Huh. Well, I did come across a video in which Mel, Mel from Atlanta called and then Mays from Dayton called right after. So I do have that clip. It's, it's getting prepped. It's not out yet. So there may be a, a classic Mays call. <laughs> uh, A. Owen says, hey, Carino. Why does Jesse dislike the word good? I don't think he dislikes the word good. That's not, I think you're mis, you're not seeing it clearly. But it's improper, or it used, historically it was improper, grammatically. And morally, in reality, to call oneself good when asked, how are you? How are you? Good. No, that's not correct. Grammatically or, um, or reality-wise. Because no one, for one, no man is good, or woman, <laughs> and um, for two, when you say good, that means good morally. How are you? Fine, or wh- well. <laughs> I hate that one. Um, doing all right, something like that. That's the the more proper <laughs> answer to how are you. All right? Just FYI. Kevin Kevin says, I think and feel nothing about those toilet liquors. Oh! We're opening the treasure chest. Yeah, Kevin, I kind of feel the same way. A. Owen says, what do you agree with when it comes to Jesse? As I disagree with him a lot, but I still like him. What do you disagree with? He is asking me. I might have said agree. What do you disagree with when it comes to Jesse? I don't know if there's anything I disagree with, except when he's criticizing me. I'm like, I disagree. <laughs> but then even then, I'm not really disagreeing because he's usually right, man. What can I say? Um, Dark Side of the Bear What says, Hey, this guy is a fed or a troll, referring to Robert from Kansas. I think he's, I think he's sincerely that blind. Floshinsky, so are they a monkey's uncle? <laughs> Uh, referring to this, uh, the theory that um, whites are the only true humans or something. Mess. G- waste of time, honestly. Giovanni A. Ever heard that saying, Noah had three sons, a red skin, a black skin, and a white skin. We are all created by one, God the creator. Leave it that way. Smiley face, praying hands, and thumbs up. Thank you, Giovanni A. Talking some sense. So... Box. By the way, guys, I didn't get to this Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, although it was written in the Sunday blog, but we did a Sunday Service 2009 premiere on this past Saturday, actually, on YouTube on Saturday. And that's right, I worked on the Sabbath, prepping it on Saturday. Sabbath, Saturday is Sabbath, right? Sabado. That's why it's called Sabado in Spanish, right? Because it's the Sabbath. But um, Nick was working too. Shame on Nick. But that's the YouTube channel called Bond Rebuilding the Man YouTube channel. The service was titled Overcoming in Spiritual Battles from May 31st, 2009. Um, most people... See, this is partly where I, where I got that question too about yes, yesterday when I asked, have you changed? Do you change? Because most people don't change much. <laughs> it was something memorable that my dad told to me when he was kind of contradicting my mother (laughs) when she's uh, referring to some family friend he's getting better (laughs) ah man that's my mama coming out when I'm saying something nice about somebody but anyways um, most people play Christian you know most people who call themselves Christian but they aren't actually overcoming their issues and that was a good point the Bible is quite clear it is quite clear, despite what, you know, the Bible thumpers in the chat claim, that you cannot sin after you've born again of God. But everyone has all these excuses to continue to sin. Yet they judge other fellow sinners, and they judge the ones who sin no more. You know, the real Christians. They judge Jesse Lee Peterson. Oh, you're sinning right now. <laughs> they, so they claim, right? Ridiculous. And then I'm judging them, and I'm the sinner too. So it's a mess. 
Um, and by the way, I still have to watch the rest of the Fallen State episode. You know how I was sick during the week? I was out during the week. <laughs> Wasn't totally sick, right? But uh, the Fallen State episode that came out uh, this past Friday called What the Inclusive Consent Coach Has Transgender Boyfriend, number 165. I still need to catch the rest of it. It was a 40-year-old, seemingly mixed, black-looking lady, Erin Tillman, E-R-I-N. The dating advice girl. She was so nice, but accepting of everything wrong. Reminds me of Genesis Porridge, right? I think where I left off, Jesse was pointing out the known fact that lesbians have higher domestic violence, so-called domestic violence, I hate that term, rates than anyone else, the lesbians do. Great conversation, though, about judgment. Judging the judges who are so-called harming the LGBTQ, she called it disappointment. But it is judgment, same thing. Just wanted to put that in there, but... Anyways, guys, luckiest followers, Reed Johnson, thank you, Reed Johnson, Army Ann, Dark Side of the Bear, what? Grace Face, Shaggy Boy, and thank you to Noah's Ark, Kansas, Dark Side of the Bear, what? Army Ann, Floshinsky, Portman, Gorgonzola, hey! Bub's Love, hey! Paramedic, uh, Tex-Mex, Reed Johnson, thank you guys. Appreciate all the support. TheHakeReport.com for my stuff. JLPTalk.com for Jesse Lee Peterson's stuff. And remember, Patreon, Subscribestar, and or NewProject2.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson for the exclusive content. It's new. It's fun. Get into it. Take care, guys.